This video is to show the people who order my gouging machine in kit form how to put it together. These are the parts that you will have. What you not have is oil. You can use mineral oil. You're going to need blue thread lock. We'll start with the bed and we will begin by putting the cane stops on the bed. You want the cane stops to come out from the bed about a uh, three hundredths to four hundredths of a millimeter. M3s for the... When you put the cane clips on the bed, take a piece of gouged cane, put it on to see if the cane will stop moving. Also, check the end where it stops, how close the cane stop is to the top where the cane is, you see. You can see that sticks out quite a bit. So we'll have to move it down. So you want to get this right. You might need to use a file to file the stops so that they fit. When you look at it, there's nothing extending out. Now I can tell I might have to file this later, and I'll wait till I get the guide in there. So for the time being, let's just say that we've got our cane stops on. The next thing we do is put the cane clips on the bed. When you put them in there, this is the front facing you with this hole here. You want to just eyeball it so that when the clip is at an angle like this, the bottom doesn't stick out. See, if the if it sticks out of the bottom like that, now that's exaggerated, but if it does, you'll have to file this bit down because it'll get stuck. I'm going to file it just a hair, just a bit, right? And you can use a fingernail file for this, just to round the edge. Okay, well, that's one end. That seems to fix it. So that one's there, and then we'll try this one like so. It's very close. So we'll just take a little bit off of the back of this one too. So we don't want to get the whole thing put together and then have it get stuck to do that, to just round the corner, the back corner of the clips. Okay, so now that we have that, attach the spring, which is fairly simple to do. Just goes in like so. It snaps in, actually. Let's get the spring underneath. Yeah, underneath, slide this in. You know, these rods should go, should go in, but they may be somewhat resistant. You may have to use a, a hammer to get it in there. Kind of tap it in. Hmm? I think I have it. So we have that. Tap it gently. And then it's probably best to use a, a punch Put it in the rest of the ways. This has to be flush. So now the other side, we can uh, tilt this back. You reach the spring and then we will attach the other side like so. There's a little tension on the spring. There we go. That side's a little easier. Once again we want this to be flush. That's good. So now we have our springs and our cane stops in the bed. Now we can put the bed onto the base plate. You're going to have two M5 screws and two brass washers. The hole, this is the front of the machine, so the front of the machine you want to be facing this way. These things go together effortlessly. If there is a lot of resistance, then you might need to realign the screw. This can be snug. And this, um, it's very strong. I'm, very little pressure is here, but it holds very well. Okay, so now we have our cane clips attached to the bed with the cane stops uh, now mounted on the base plate. So let's put the, the guide together. You have a guide. We'll have our two posts, aluminum posts and we'll have our stainless steel rod. And we have these two posts. Clean sides need to be facing you and the screws need to be facing away. You can see that we have the holes for each one of them. And this is going to use an, just an M4 screw. I know I've done this already, but... Everything is Phillips head. A screwdriver like this is all you need. You don't want it to be too tight. Remember, aluminum and brass are easily stripped. 
There might be some residual stuff after it's been machined. Just be aware of that. If you feel some grit with the screws going in, that is normal. If the screw fails to go in, well, that's the problem. But a little grit is okay. And here's the other post. You can hear the grit. Here it's a little gritty. That's okay. I would just put a little oil on this rod to make it easier to assemble. Now what we can do, we're going to have our two grommets here. We have to put one of the ends of the rods in first. And then we can put a grommet on one end. After that, I will continue to push the rod through so that we can put our guide on. Maybe put a little oil here. And I think it's easy enough to put the guide on. This guide is only going to go one way. We have one grommet on one side, and we'll put the other grommet or washer, depending on what uh, I send you. But I do like these grommets. A little more expensive, but they work really well. And then we have our guide. Now we're going to make this these from about firm, okay? Don't over tighten. You have resistance, you can't turn it anymore. And there's our guide. Now, we're going to line up the guide with the bed. And this is how I do it. It needs to be centered. And actually, it looks fairly centered already. Except for this end. Just loosen these here on the bottom so they're somewhat loose. Move the bed and the guide. Fit the guide, which is this bit, into the bed and press so that it's centered. Because they're the same radii, they should fit. And then, after that's, you may snug it up a little bit. Then move to the other end and do the same thing. Press and move the, the bed so that it's equidistant, lined up with the guide. We may have to do some adjustment later, but right for the time being, this is how it should be. And then snug this up also. It should not move. Okay, so now we have this relatively lined up. The next thing we want to do, set this aside for now. We want to assemble the spindle bearing. So we're going to take our bearing, and it easily mounts on the spindle. You just press. Make sure it's straight. Straight and press. Should go in fairly easily. Come on, don't embarrass me. Yeah, all right. It's a little off center. In the event that the bearing doesn't slide on effortlessly, some do, some don't, you're gonna need to get a couple pieces of wood. You wanna be very careful because you wanna damage the bearing. But you lightly tap. Yeah, and there you go. Very simple. You want to make sure it's flush. Like I said, sometimes they go uneasy, and sometimes they require a little more force. But be be gentle. What we're going to do now, before we put the spindle bearing in, is we are going to put the blade guide screws. Attach one guide screw to the front. It's an M4. Still, it's flush with the inside housing. Take your blade guide rod, goes inside the guide, and you can drop it in. Here we have a bolt cap or a screw cap that will be attached to this screw that goes on the rear of the, the guide carriage. And we attach this to the back, like so. Make sure you orientate the cap the correct way. Then when, once that's in, you can turn and close the cap. There's the cap. This just keeps from damaging the base plate when you pick the guide up. The next thing I want to do 
is put the front bearing plate on. You might want to check to make sure that the holes are orientated properly because one side may work better than the other. So long as it is flat and level, and it should be the way it's machined, it should be level and equal on both sides with the top of the bed. Now this will require an M4 screw and washer. And we want to make sure those holes line up. And they should line up no problem the way this thing's machined. Both of the base plate and the bed are threaded. So you will have to screw it in all the way. And yeah, that looks real nice. So these are even. Everything is even. If one side is higher than the other, you can simply tighten the bottom screw and that'll pull it closer and even it out. But that looks even and flush. Very good. So now I think we'll put our spindle bearing on with the oval screw. There are two washers, one for either side. There's two ways to orient this thing. And I would choose the screw closer to the right side of the center. And we're going to put that on. But first, we need thread lock. And this is important for this thing to function properly. And this is blue thread lock. And we're going to put a drop. This comes out rather quickly, so we've got to be real careful. You don't have to completely fill it, but a drop that must be present. And that looks... That's about the right amount of thread lock. And now we're going to take our spindle bearing unit orientated with the screw toward the right side. And we will put our screw carefully. There we go. We want this to be actually quite firm, but you still want to be able to turn the spindle bearing from the outside. And that seems to be all right. Let me just just a little less and I think that shall work. Once the thread lock takes effect it'll be just right. So if you made it this far congratulations. You've uh, done the bulk of the assembly. We'll let the thread lock cure and then we will put the blade in, set the blade, and do the finishing touches on the machine. So for now, we'll just leave it at that.